Hello everybody! In this video I will show you how to program a PIC microcontroller from microchip and how to simulate the code in Proteus. First we need to create a project. We want a schematic, a layout for the future design of the project and most important the firmware. Selecting the microcontroller and the compiler. The compiler is important as it makes the conversion between the code that we wrote, the programming language and the machine language, zeros and ones. We can see all the windows that we created and in the schematic window we can find the microcontroller already placed. This one is a 44 pin microcontroller but I have and want to use a 40 pin microcontroller. So I have to change the package. To do this, right click on the component and select Packaging Tool. Here we can select the wanted package for our application. Now that the numbers of the pins have changed and we have the right microcontroller, we need to think what to do with this microcontroller. Starting with something simple, I want to light up some LEDs. I should pick one of the microcontroller ports, for example port B, which has 8 pins from pin 0, RB0, to pin 7, RB7. And I will place one LED on each pin. For simulation purpose, resistors are not needed to limit the LED's current. In the way that the LEDs are connected with cathodes to ground, we need to generate a voltage at the anode to turn them on. To do this, we go to the source code window and we will program the pins that we connected to the LEDs to generate this voltage. For an easier understanding, we can put labels on the microcontroller pins so we know to which LED each one is connected. We do this with define function. This makes the code more professional and easier for other persons to understand the function. Now we have to configure the pins from the port. In case we don't know the configuration registers for the pins, we can have a look in the datasheet. To generate a voltage at the pins of the port, we need to make the pins as output pins. To do this, use the trees register for port B. We can set the bit value, a bit for each pin. Zero meaning that the pin is configured as output, and one meaning that the pin is configured as input. To generate a digital signal, only low or high values, we use the Ansel H register, which configures the pins from port B as digital with 0 or as analog with 1. If you want to use the other pins from other ports, you will have to configure them also. Now that we have set the pins on which we connected the LEDs as digital output, we can go in the while loop, which is an infinite loop, executing the instructions inside it while the condition is true. Let's say I want to turn on and off an LED. In this case, we can continuously negate the value of the LED on or off with a delay. Let's assume that for the first run from the while, the LED was initially turned off. The LED will be turned on and then we need to create a delay so it will stay on for a period of time. A basic delay can be created by forcing the microcontroller to run a number of empty instructions. Considering that each instruction will take some time depending on the frequency of the oscillator that the microcontroller uses, we can approximate a delay. For example, we can make it run 10,000 empty instructions with a for function. This for will increment the x variable declared above with 1, starting from 0 until it reaches 10,000. This is not the best way to create delays, as there are more precise ways, but we can discuss this in a different video. Let's compile this code and we expect to see LED1 turning on and off with a delay. We see that there are some errors, Proteus mentions the lines at which the errors are, and I can see that instead of define, 
I wrote defines. Quickly correct the error and compile again. Now the LED one is turning on and off with a delay. But we see that the other LEDs are either on or off. We can make the delay smaller and to make sure that all the LEDs are turned off when the program will start, we can configure the port B on zero, which means it will give zero logic at the output, which also means zero volts. Now all the LEDs are turned off at the beginning of the simulation and only LED1 will turn on and off with a smaller delay. If we want to turn the LEDs on in a sequence, we can simply give the pins zero value, meaning zero volts generated by the pins, as the LEDs are turned off, or one value, meaning five volts generated by the pins and the LEDs are on. So first we turn the LED1 on, setting it on 1. We wait to run 1000 instructions, then we turn it off by setting it on 0 and turn on LED2. Wait another 10,000 instructions and so on, until we set LED7 off and LED8 on. Now if the while loop is starting again, LED8 will remain turned on if we don't turn it off at the beginning. So we add LED8 equals 0. Compile the code, run the simulation and see the results. This is not the only way to make this function and frankly there are a lot of ways to write the same function with a code. What is different is how you can optimize the code. We can write a more optimized version of this code by simply shifting the value of the bits at the microcontroller port. For this we need to know a little bit the conversion between binary and hexaencoding. 0x01 means in binary 0b0000001, which has one bit for each microcontroller pin. The first bit, after the b, is the most significant bit, which is the RB7 pin. The last bit is the least significant bit, which is for RB0 pin. In the initial state, the first LED to be turned on will be the one connected to RB0 pin, which is LED8. Then shifting the bit towards left, the value will be 0B0000010. And the next LED will be on, which is LED7. We repeat this until the value is lower than 0B1000000. To do this, we need to assign these changing values x to port b. Between each bit shifting, we create a delay. We compile and see that there is an error. This is because we didn't write in the hexadecimal format the values. Change from b to x and we are ready to go. We can see that LED1 from RP7 is actually not turning on. This is because in the for we stop the value at 01000000 and to take the last value we need to modify the sign to less or equal to. To make them go in reverse simply add another for with inverse values and signs. Now let's program the microcontroller. To program it, you need a programmer, depending on the software you use to program. For example, programming with MPLAB can be done via PICKIT3 and using a specific socket for the microcontroller. If you want to make a board for this project, you can also use the PCB layout window from Proteus. In simulation we didn't use resistors, but now we have to place them in order to limit the current. A 200 ohms value is enough so we don't burn the LEDs. If you want to be able to program the microcontroller directly on your board without placing it in the programming socket, you can use the in-circuit serial programming, ICSP. 
using a connector with 5 pins and connecting it in the specified way at the microcontroller. Now, whenever you want to reprogram the microcontroller, you can connect the Picket Tree Programmer directly to this board to load the software. Make all the connections and now you also have a PCB for your device. 